Good morning, Dr. Sagar. Good morning, Praveen. Let's start the rounds. All right. Overnight, uh, we got 45-year-old male with a past medical history of COPD who was admitted to hospital with complaint of cough, shortness of breath, and wheezing. He was eventually diagnosed with COPD exacerbation. He was intubated for persistent hypercapnic respiratory failure. He was managed with bronchodilators, systemic corticosteroids, and antibiotics. I'm concerned about the patient being agitated, having trouble breathing, and using accessory muscles. Even though we intubated him, treated him with bronchodilators, steroids, and antibiotics. I cannot explain this. Hmm. I think this patient might have auto peep. What in the waveform suggests auto peep? Well, by inspecting the flow time waveform, you'll notice the persistence of flow at the end of expiration, indicated by the arrow. The persistence of expiratory flow at end expiration reflects the persistence of a pressure gradient at end of expiration between the ventilator and the alveoli. That is to say, at end expiration, the upstream pressure, which is the alveolar pressure, is still greater than the downstream pressure, which in general is the level of applied PEEP or extrinsic PEEP. Thus, the respiratory system failed to expire to its relaxation volume, which is the functional residual capacity. The failure to expire completely leads to a progressive increase in lung volume due to dynamic hyperinflation. The dynamic hyperinflation leads to an increase in alveolar pressure at the end of expiration, or auto peep. Does the degree of flow at end expiration suggest the degree of auto peep? No. In fact, even the virtual absence of end expiratory flow may not indicate the absence of auto peep. The near zero flow may simply reflect very severe obstruction. In other words, the degree of end expiratory flow itself has no relationship to the degree of auto peep. To better understand this, imagine blowing through a very thin straw. The amount of pressure you're exerting has no relationship to the amount of flow through the straw. So in that case, how can we measure auto peep? The clinician can determine the level of alveolar pressure and end expiration, or auto peep, by simply pressing the end expiratory pause button on the ventilator. This will abruptly stop the flow at the end of expiration, allowing equalization of pressures through the circuit. At that point, the airway pressure recorded by the ventilator will equal the end expiratory alveolar pressure, or the intrinsic peep. This can also be seen on the pressure time waveform with the blue arrow indicating the extrinsic peep, the green arrow indicating the expiratory pause, and the red arrow indicating the intrinsic peep. What are the effects of auto peep? The most dramatic effect of hyperinflation in auto peep is a decrease in venous return. This occurs due to an increase in pleural and intrathoracic pressure, resulting in a decrease in venous return and cardiac output. This will ultimately lead to hypotension. The dynamic hyperinflation also increases pulmonary vascular resistance by compressing alveolar capillaries, leading to an increase in the right ventricular afterload, which further decreases the cardiac output. A more subtle but important effect is the increase of work of breathing and inability of the patient to trigger the ventilator. This is because the dynamic hyperinflation puts the inspiratory muscles at a disadvantage. In normal subjects, the normal curvature of the diaphragm allows it to move like a piston, moving downwards into the abdominal cavity. In patients with auto peep, the dynamic hyperinflation would put the diaphragm at a disadvantage making it difficult for the diaphragm to generate any force. The closer the lung approaches total lung capacity, the less the amount of negative pressure the respiratory muscles can generate, as seen in the figure. In fact, the maximum inspiratory pressure continues to decrease with increasing lung volume, 
reaching zero at total lung capacity. To better understand this, try taking a deep breath in, then try to take a further breath on top of that. So how can I manage auto beep? Well, it is worth noting here that we are mainly talking about dynamic hyperinflation and auto peep due to flow limitation of obstruction. So from the practical standpoint, the main focus should be to try to minimize the degree of auto peep. This can be achieved by treating the obstruction, decreasing the tidal volume, or increasing the expiratory time, which can be done either by increasing the expiratory flow, allowing more time for expiration, or by decreasing the respiratory rate. In certain cases, however, minimizing the effect of auto peep may be attempted, and that can be achieved by applying external peep. Wait a second, how can external peep potentially help managing the effect of auto peep? To better understand the effects of external peep on patients with auto peep due to airflow limitation, it is better to think of both phases of breathing separately. Take a look at these examples. The first patient has an intrinsic peep of 15 centimeter water and an external peep of zero. In order for this patient to trigger the breath, he will have to generate a negative pressure of at least 15 centimeters of water to overcome the intrinsic peep. In comparison, in a similar patient with an intrinsic peep of 15 centimeters of water and external peep of 10 centimeters of water, the patient will only need a negative pressure of 5 centimeters of water to initiate the breath. In both examples, the ventilator trigger sensitivity is assumed to be zero. While the effect of external peep during inspiration may be obvious, its effect during expiration may not be as clear as it may appear that external PEEP would impede the flow during expiration. To better understand this, let us use the same case with the intrinsic PEEP of 15 cm water and an external PEEP of 0 as an example. With the intrinsic PEEP being the upstream pressure on the waterfall and the external PEEP being the downstream pressure. As demonstrated here, increasing the external pressure to 7 centimeters water does not affect the degree of intrinsic PEEP. Note that even the plateau pressure shown here and the peak airway pressure are not changed. It's only when the external pressure exceeds the intrinsic PEEP that both pressure rise as shown here by applying an external pressure of 17 centimeters of water. To summarize, as long as the amount of external PEEP is below the amount of intrinsic PEEP, it will help augment inspiration with no harmful effect during expiration. Thank you, Dr. Seger. That was very educational.